name is Carmel and this is my channel Carmel Codes. Welcome if you've never been here before. In this tutorial we're going to go over uh, Firebase and Firestore. So as always, uh, first little demo. So here I have a survey page uh, where people can submit their survey responses um, to the question, what are your favorite tunes? And so here I see, submit a answer that says, I like SZA. And when I go over to my Cloud Firestore database, you can see that the answer appears there, I like SZA. Um, and I also have an answers page where I fetch all of my answers from this uh, Firestore database. And um, uh, as you can see in there in the Firebase console, this is real data. In this tutorial today, I'm just going to go over this survey page, uh, what are your favorite tunes, and posting data to the Firebase. I'm not really going to go over um, get fetching the answers just yet. That'll be in the next video. This part is the first part of a two-part series. I'm going to restart the React app that I've been building on in this series, but by the way, you don't absolutely need all of the code from this entire series to do this part. Um, you basically just need uh, like the Firestore part set up um, and if you need help with that I'll link a tutorial like in the upper right hand corner so you can go to it. So in this first part we're just going to initialize our database actually it with from within the Firebase console. Uh, the time zone doesn't really matter. Theoretically it should be faster wherever your users are based but um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I think the default is like closest to whatever location you're in anyway and we're going to start a collection just so that you can get a feel for like how the Firestore database works. Um, and the document ID is usually this like unique ID um, that either you or Firebase can set. So uh, here I do test one, two, three, but it'll usually be like lots of letters and numbers that are just no human can remember it. Um, and in this case, our schema is going to be uh, this answer object where it's just says answer, test answer. Firestore is very like, I don't know, like Wild West with their way of, do, um, you know, database storage. Um, it's a NoSQL database if you're interested in the terminology, but basically that schema is not, or like that blueprint is not set. You can you can post whatever in the future and, and Firebase will basically take it, which is super interesting. So uh, in this next part is mostly just scaffolding for creating these two separate pages. You can go ahead and skip over this part to uh, the next timestamp in the description. If you're not interested in this part, you already have two pages set up. Um, however, there is, we are going to go over actually adding Firestore to our Firebase config. So you might not want to skip that part. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in this case, uh, I'm basically making an answers page and a survey page. Uh, I didn't want to skip over this uh, in this tutorial because I really hate when tutorials suddenly just have code that the, you know, person didn't show, like how they built it before. So I didn't want to forget this part. Um, so yeah, here in survey, I'm returning a header one uh, that says, what are your favorite tunes? And then, of course, I export my component at the bottom. And then I wrap it with a div so that I can add uh, some container styling to the div itself. Import my CSS styles. And here for my container class, I'm adding uh, a margin top, a margin left, and a width of 50%. Um, just to add so that it isn't covered by the navigation bar. All right, next up, I'm going to make my form component with an odd submit handler that uses a function called save answer. And in there, I'm going to put a input of type text with an ID of answer. This ID is actually important for when we actually post the data to Firestore. Try and use this exact input if you can. And lastly, I add a button uh, which we'll call the save answer function, which we now have to write. I do const save answer is equal to, and then uh, it takes in a parameter called event. And uh, first we're going to event.prevent default. So that's to prevent the page from refreshing on us. And then I say const elements array is equal to the spread operator, which is an ellipsis, event.target.elements just to kind of show what this uh, elements array is grabbing, I want to console log it. 
And it is at this point that I realize that we have no way of getting to our survey page just yet. So now I have to add it to my navigation bar and um, the rest of my like routing functionality within my app. So here I'm adding a link to roots.survey. And I also have to add another one for uh, roots.answers. Here I'm going to use command click to go into roots so that I can add my survey and answers uh, cons. Lastly, I have to find where I stored my switch component. It was not in web app, uh, it was in app.js. And I'm going to add a couple of routes here which will actually render my survey and answers component. In this case, I'm not gonna make it a private route which is basically when the user has to be logged in in order to see the route. In this case, I'm just doing it um, kind of like anonymously, like you don't have to be logged in to see it. If you are interested in private routes, like you're using Firebase behind something where you want people to be logged in first, I have another tutorial for that. So I actually have to build out uh, a very basic answers component before I can pass it into the component for the routes. So I do import react from react, const answers uh, equals a function, and then I return a header one. And then I export default answers. I also import answers.css. Lastly, I add some styles to answers.css. Uh, which are basically identical to the other ones. Basically just setting up my two pages so that I have something to build off of. So now that I finally created my answers component, I'm going to uh, pass it in. And here's where I pause because I feel like the imports for this just look messy. I try and fix it by moving use auth down so that it's after all of my components. I really I should just make like an index.js file so that it's like nice and pretty and if you go to the index.js file it's listed out in that order too. But it, it's very nitpicky. It's not a big deal. I just, I don't know, it, it just like triggered me for some reason. Okay, so uh, yes, we have our survey and our answers components popping up on our navigation bar. Uh, and now I'm going to, what am I doing? I'm going to survey and finishing out the rest of this uh, Firebase you know, uh, data and actually submitting to it. So I'm opening up the JavaScript console just so that I can console log a few things as I'm building out this um, save answer helper function. So here I pressed on the button which calls save answer and as you can see it's printing out uh, elements array right now. So elements array has everything in that form including the button. Um, but the button is not something we really need. We only want like the inputs, which we in this case have given an ID of answer. So here, um, that is what elements array looks like. And now I'm going to define const form data is equal to elements array dot reduce and use this reduce method, which is like a special array method, uh, which takes in an accumulator and a the current value of the array. I know this is like kind of extra for just one element, but I did want to try out using uncontrolled form components uh, based off of this Twitter post from Josh Kamu, um, like a famous front end developer. And uh, if you want to use like use state hooks for your form, I have another tutorial for that and it's a very similar idea. In any case, so we say if current value.id, which means, you know, we're grabbing the element with an ID, then we want to say accumulator um, current value.id is equal to current value.value, .value, where current value.value .value will actually be what's within that input component. So you might be able to see what's already happening here. Um, don't forget the second argument, which is an empty object. Uh, and this is a good checkpoint. So when you click on that button, your form data should look something like this, uh, where it has it, it has like an object with answer and then and the input from uh, in your form. All right, so now we will finally move on to the uh, Firebase part of this, which is actually posting to the Firebase database.
So how you call on Firestore is by saying db.collection and then the collection name dot add uh, and then an object. So um, there are two like Firestore functions. There's add and then there's set. Set is when you want to set that ID, but add is when you let Firebase basically come up with the ID for you for that document. So um, at this point, I realized that I did not set up database so find wherever you defined Firebase.initialize app and below that put const db is equal to firebase.firestore and then at the top import firebase slash firestore and then finally export comma db after firebase so firebase comma db heading back over to survey.js uh, i'm going to reattempt importing my db variable as you can see it pops up there so um, I'm importing db from my config file and now I'm just going to test out uh, basically just submitting a object to the uh, firebase not necessarily the object from the form but just so you can get a feel for visually like what's happening in this function so I uh, how you do this is by passing in instead of a string hello, put it in an object and do answer.hello. Then next I'm going over to the network tab, checking under headers for a 200 response, um, which means successful. Uh, and as I, when I go back to the Firebase console and I look around, I do see that the uh, my hello object is there. So again, this is uh, db.collectionsurveyresponses.add um, and then form data. So form data has a very similar structure to answer object, um, but instead it's actually, you know, the input from your variable. So uh, here I'm just testing it out, seeing, making sure that uh, my input is going through correctly. And that is all there is for submitting data to Firestore. For the next video, if you want to follow along uh, how to get answers, so how to like actually grab that data, it's a lot more complicated and I didn't want to, you know, sacrifice any of the details. So I basically just kept this video to posting um, data. If you're still here, thank you so much. And um, please like, please comment your feedback. I love seeing the comments. I read all of them.